Sing unto the Lord a new song. Today is Mother's Day, and Joyce did a great job in tribute to that. And we all have a mother, and we joyfully sing praises for her influence on us as we go, go about our living. You know, I'm thankful for my mom. And I'm also thankful for all the other moms of my life that have enriched me in so many different ways. We salute each mom today for being the stabilizer that's in our lives as we live it. We sing praises in all that our moms have done for us. We give thanks for being the chosen one by our mom. And also, we're grateful for the relationships that we have shared with them throughout the years of our lives. What a great theme for the service of today. Sing what I love to do. Unfortunately, right now, we can't do that. But we can still, in our inner beings, experience that. Today's scripture is the Psalm 98, which Kenitha shared with us earlier, and we're going to have an opportunity to hear that again. There are several details about that 98th Psalm that have been lost, lost to the history. And, there, and as I read a little bit about this, there's just a lot that's unknown about this, who wrote it, when, and under what circumstances, etc. There is one unique feature about Psalm 98. You know, most of the Psalms have a title up in front of them. Psalm 98 says, a Psalm. And it's the only Psalm that has that as its title. It's a powerful hymn. It really has three stanzas within it. The first three stanzas talk about the praise of God and God's character. The next three stanzas discuss how such praise should be done to God. And the final three indicate that praise should come from all parts of creation. Praise God, how to do it, and everybody's in the game. First three verses. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Praise God. So how are we going to do it? Shout for joy to the Lord to the earth. Burst into jubilant song. Make music to the Lord of the, with your harp. With your harp and the sound of the singing. With trumpets and with the blast of the ram's horn. Shouts of joy before the Lord the King. We have today strings. We have a dulcimer, I believe. Okay, and we had the piano. We make joyful noise with the instruments that we have. The last three. <clears throat> Let the earth resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing with joy. Let them sing before the Lord for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. Everybody and everything, praise to God. God's greatest love and his marvelous works are indeed for all of creation, not just a select group or a few people, even the sea, the creatures, the floods, the hills, the mountains, and all of creation are encouraged and empowered to praise God. 
This praise by all of creation, as stated in the writers of this psalm, should be a, quote, new psalm. God is constantly doing marvelous works. Our hymnal is full of experiences and expressions of this. Thanks to Robert, I'm going to have three different hymns come up, and we're going to only look at the first verse. These hymns are, are all part of that. So, Robert, if you could please put up number one, Great and Marvelous. Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord of hosts, almighty one. Earth and firmament speak thy praise. Thy name is written in the sun. That's a hymn that we all know. Praise God for the writer of that hymn and the expressions that we experience as we sing, read, and experience those words. All right, number two, please. This is a hymn that is a little bit newer. It was one of Joni's favorite hymns, and we used to talk about this hymn a lot. Earth and all stars, loud rushing planets, sing to the Lord a new song. Hail, wind and rain, loud blowing snowstorms, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done marvelous things. We will sing praises with a new song. The other verses of this hymn speak of some of the things that we've talked about you know, how we make this, the sound with strings, with harp, with cymbals, loud clanging hammers, and all of the elements of noise that we experience are really experiencing and expressing that love and that joy to our Heavenly Father. Hymn 102, Earth and All Stars. All right, number three, please. I'm thinking we've got a mistake here on this one. I was into a, a, the praise hymnal. Anybody remember the praise hymnal? Okay, so I apologize, Robert, if I've given you the wrong, wrong uh, word here, but I'm going to read this one that I want to do. This is hymn 45 out of our praise hymnal, if you happen to have one of those at home still. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There will be shouts of joy, and all the streets of the field, all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. I thought I'd get a response there. Okay, do you recall that hymn, singing that hymn over and over? It just, it was always such a joyous expression, and I, I just had to go back to pick out that one. The new song that we use should have all the means that we have within our being to praise God. Joyous songs, bells, strings, trumpets, the horns, lyres, flutes, all those instruments that we think of, but also some other instruments. The roaring sea, the river, river rapids, the singing hills. You recall, the hills are alive with the sound of music. One of my favorites. All the creations that are here on earth are blending praise. Praise with this joyful noise. We've all experienced that. I just have to share some of my favorites. We had an opportunity a few years ago to go to Hawaii, one of my bucket lists, and uh, see uh, the caves while we were there and, and had a great time. But there was one drive on, on that uh, experience that I will never forget, the road to Hana. Around every corner, there was another waterfall. It wasn't one of those things you just how fast you, it was how slow can I go and experience the beauty of creation. 
I will never forget the waterfalls. They sang a song to my soul. A second one, have you been on a rafting trip? Maybe. Been there, done that. You go along, it's such gentle flowing, and all of a sudden, here comes the rapids. And luckily, we have a great guide that steers us through those. But the, the thrill, the invigorement, and then the joy and excitement that you experience. I, being old, have the opportunity now to do some things that uh, when I was actively teaching, coaching, and so on, couldn't do. So we spend the winters, as you know, in Colorado. And our condo we bought there has the Blue Rent River in our backyard. Okay, unfortunately, I love to ski every day, but Karen doesn't. Well, but for her, and I told her I was gonna talk about her today, we set up a little office spot in our bedroom over a window that overlooks the river. And I'm not sure whether she's physically working or whether she's enjoying the beauty of creation because I hear stories about, well, the fly fishermen came today, Paul, they were there. And I've watched them also. It's just, it's, it's enthralling. It, it, it speaks to your soul in the beauty of that creation. The ending verses of this Psalm explore two facets that we need to consider. First, they suggest that God is not vengeful. He's not wanting to treat people harshly for any mistakes they have. Instead, those verses say that God is a God of love who will judge with righteousness and equity. They talk of a Messiah who is coming, which we know and see now as Jesus Christ. John 3.16, a familiar scripture for all of us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We know that scripture. Verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world through him might be saved. Both of those scriptures are parts of hymns. And as I think of them, I normally think of them in the hymn version rather than the scripture version. As Kenneth has said, I love the hymnal. <laughs> And, and it's, it is my, my scripture. Make of a joyful noise and singing a new song are ways of communicating God's love and care for his creation. Being aware of God's marvelous works and his all his creation gives each of us an opportunity to witness what we know and how we sing it to the Lord. Find a song that expresses your praise and challenge as a new way of being and living your life. As we say, sing it high, sing it low. Sing it for all the world to know. What blessings have you experienced in the past month that you can sing a new song of praise and thanksgiving. The last month I've been spending outside, I love to work outside in gardens and yards. The spring cleanup, getting rid of all of that leftover garbage that's just there from the winter, the dead leaves, the dead whatever, getting all cleaned off and then seeing the new growth start up planting some new flowers to give some color, mulching the beds when you get all done. And oh, it, just, it just does something to my soul as I stand and, and uh, observe the beauty of creation. Share with someone this week a new song that will have a positive impact and a joyous response. Smile, and I can guarantee a smile will come back to you. When you sing a new song, 
What has been your experience? Do you recall whistle while you work? As you go about your daily routine or your job or whatever, do you find yourself whistling or humming or singing? That's what I find myself doing all the time. Sometimes I make up my own words and my own tunes. Pick a phrase pick some notes, and sing a new song. Have something that has a meaning to you and sing it about the experiences that you have this week. Thirdly, praise is an important part of our spiritual formation. What has been your experience? when you intentionally focused on praising God. This intentional focus to me is what I call my mountaintop experiences and why I love singing. I love skiing. They take me to high places. Um, I'm on Facebook a little bit. And I remember this last winter, an experience where I was at the top at Copper Mountain. I went over to the side and the beauty of the creation was so magnitude that, that I had to just sing a song. There weren't very many people around and I wasn't singing out loud, too loud. <clears throat> uh, so I, I, I hope that I didn't interrupt anybody else's time, but There are experiences that you can experience that'll help you become a more, uh, uh, what's the word, spiritual enlightened person (laughs) as you uh, make that a part of of who you are and what you do. Uh, There's a piece at place at Keystone that I take a picture every year. I don't know why, but it just, it gets to me every year when I come around this corner and I look down and there's Lake Dillon. And early this year when we were skiing, Lake Dillon wasn't frozen over yet. So you could see the ice patch, but then you could see some unfrozen water still rippling a little bit. And so School Marm is a very slow meandering, but it's got a nice little spot where you can pull off and just look and stop and take a picture. I've got the same picture from every year for years, but it does something to me. The beauty of that spot the gloriousness of creation. Gazing at a lake from a bird's eye view is different than being right down on the water's edge. Both are good, but there's something about being up above and looking down. Tahoe, great, beautiful, deep blue lake. But you come around the top of the curve and look, and there it is, right in front of you. I remember uh, with Karen going uh, on a a gondola, she had never ridden what I would call a, like a school bus type gondola, holds like 50, 75 people. But Tahoe has one of those. So we took it up the mountain, but then I said, we're gonna take it down also, because when you take it down, it's like you're suspended in, air looking out the beauty of creation every place and the lake right in front of you. One of those experiences that you just never forget in life. You all have had yours. I invite you to follow the rule of stop, look, and listen. It will apply to a lot of aspects of your life but you will experience God's creation and beauty and make it a part of who you are. There are many hymns that we have sung together. We've talked about three or four of them a while ago, but our first hymn of the day was joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 
You experienced that hymn many times. Believe it and live it. A hymn in our new hymnal that, that uh, speaks to me is uh, related to this 98th Psalm again. I will sing, I will sing a song unto the Lord. I will sing, I will sing a song unto the Lord. I will sing, I will sing a song unto the Lord. Alleluia, glory to the Lord. One of our newer hymns, but it's one that, that speaks to my soul. My life flows on in endless song. Above earth's lamentations, I hear the real, though far off hymns that hail a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and of earth, how can I keep from singing? The Christmas season is always one of our favorites for hymns and singing. I love to play the trumpet. Unfortunately, the lip is about gone. But one that I try every year, at least at home, is joy to the Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. You know that hymn. Experience it with joy in all that you do. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Praise ye the Lord. <laughs> 